Hi, thanks for joining me. I'm excited to dive in the Word with you. This is day four in our Psalms 119 challenge. We are reading verses 25 through 32 today, and I am asking God to teach us something new and to revive our spirits and encourage our hearts today. And I think we're going to see that the psalmist asked the same thing many, many years ago. This is what I love about the Bible. It is timeless. And what we're going to find out, or what we are finding out, is a, the psalmist here and everybody in this Bible felt and experienced the same thing that we experienced thousands of years later. It says, I lie in the dust. <laughs> the psalmist is saying, I have been knocked down, trampled over. I am laying in the dust. I'm tired. He's saying, revive me by your word. Psalm 119, 25. Let me read it again. I lie in the dust. Revive me, God, by your word. The word of God revives. Do you need some reviving today? I do. <laughs> I just keep putting extra layers of makeup on because I'm tired. And I realized a lot of my tiredness, a lot of times I'm lying in the dust because of self-effort, perfectionism, wearing myself out, trying to give my attention to so many things. And I find myself so many times, even this morning even, saying, God, just like the psalmist, I, I feel like I'm face down here in the dirt. Would you revive me? And we are revived by his word. Because when we come into the word of God, we're coming into the presence of God. We're coming into his truths and we're the... And, and we come to know him and we become to know something that is sturdy and a foundation that enables us to stand and to trust. But a lot of times we can't trust things today. This is something we can trust. It's never going to change. So he's saying, revive me. Give me my strength back. Think about that word revive. It's just, just kind of coming up my heart right now. Think about people who have to be resuscitated. Maybe they've, they've been revived back to life, maybe with um, CPR or those electric shocks, you know, that they, that they put on when they go clear. And it's like, that's what we're asking God right now to come and infuse us with life again. Shock us, God, not in a bad way, but just revive us. If I went and jumped in that lake out there, I would be refreshed and revived because of the water. And let's say, God, let the living water here revive me. Then he says in verse 26, I told you my plans and you answered. Do you know God wants to know your plans? Now, many times in Psalms and Proverbs, it, it'll say, you know, many are the plans of a man's heart, but the God directs them. And then some will say it's futile to make plans. Well, we know that we need to plan. We do not need to be careless. We do not need to go through life without any plan. But the thing is, we bring God into our plans, and that's what he's saying. God, I told you my plans, and you answered. What I like to do is say, God, this is what I feel like I'm, trying to, I'm supposed to do, but if this is not of you, show me, stop me. I bring him into my plans. And that's what the psalmist is doing. I told you my plans, God. How do you do that? You just talk to God. God, this is what I feel like I should do. A lot of times we think it's got to be some magical words. I write God's letters sometimes. I just sit and write it down. God, here's what I'm planning. Show me where I should tweak this, change this, or say no to this. Or give me the, the creativity to go with this thing and the strength. And, and he will answer you. God says, call out to me for wisdom and I will answer you and I will show you things it says in the word of God and that's what the psalmist says and you answered now teach me your decrees again he's just talking to God teach me God help me understand verse 27 help me understand the meaning of your commandments and I will meditate on your wonderful deeds now if we remember yesterday we talked about excuse me one second I've got to push this thing up because I'm staring at it okay Thank you. You couldn't see it, but there's all these notifications and another one just popped up. Oh, well. 
Um, he says, help me understand the meaning of your commandments. And yesterday we said that, God, remove anything that's hindering me from seeing, understanding, hearing. Again, that's what he's saying. And I will meditate. Do you notice how many times he says this? God, give me eyes to see, ears to hear. Give me understanding. Teach me, teach me, teach me, teach me, teach me. Help me understand the meaning of your commandments. And I will meditate on your wonderful deeds. Can we just stop right there? When's the last time that you and I sat and meditated, not just on the Word of God, because we know we're supposed to do that, but on His wonderful deeds, the things that He has done for you and for me. So let's just right now, maybe you can stop this video, write down four, five, ten things. I mean, maybe one thing a day. God, at the end of the day, what did you, the wonderful thing you did for me today? Well, you gave me oxygen to breathe. You helped my lungs work. You, you gave me eyes to see the beautiful lake and I could hear music today. And oh God, I saw a rainbow. And you can just think that you saved me, Lord. You you put this person in my life. You took this person out of my life. You can, you can always find something to give thanks to God for. So he's meditating on all the wonderful things God has done for him. And that will revive you. The Word of God will revive you. And meditating on how good He is and how faithful He's been to you, that will revive you. Now listen, it says in verse 28, I weep with sorrow. I've told you already several times, and we were only in day four here, but this is a real person who's being hunted down by people. He's being gossiped about. He's tired. He's laying in the dust. He's, he, this is one of God's servants. He's saying, I weep with sorrow. So don't think you're, you're unchristian like if you're weeping. If, you, if something's wrong with your faith, if you're in the dust. <laughs> because that's just part of life. We go through cycles. And there are times that I just cry. And, and I think you know, the other day I just came and just buried my head in Tim's and just kind of like, oh, and it's just a weight of the world begins to pile up on us and sorrow and grief. And, and what I do in those times, I just stop and say, Lord, kind of tilt my shoulders. I'm like, I'm just going to let everything roll off me right now. And he's saying, I weep with sorrow. Encourage me by your word. Speak to me, God. You know, I didn't look it up here, but the word can be translated several ways, and I don't know which way it is, but I want to teach it both ways. We've got the written word of God, and we also have the spoken word of God, a rhema word, which is a word that God quickens to your spirit. It might can be spoken to you by a person. Maybe I've spoken something to you today, and God's used me to speak to your heart. It could be um, just an inner voice that something quickens in your heart. I don't know which way this word is used. I need to, to look it up, but it says, encourage me by your word. We can be encouraged by the written word of God, but God, I think he's here saying, God, encourage me. Speak to me. Encourage me with a word from you. Then he says, keep me from lying to myself. <laughs> I have that circled. Do not be afraid to write in your Bible. I have that circled, underlined, like exclamation points. Well, I don't have that there, but I'm getting ready to put one. Keep me from lying to myself. It is so easy to lie to yourself. Now, this is just a funny example. The other day, I was working out with Bo Yan, my trainer, and and I was talking about my weight is kind of climbing up a little bit. I'm like, I don't know what it is. And he says, well, Christy, why don't you try eating, doing intermittent fasting just at night? If you, your last meal, go 12 to 14 hours and until um, you eat your breakfast. So if you eat at 6 o'clock at night, you're going to eat at 6 to 8 o'clock the next morning and don't eat anything in between. I'm like, I do. that's what I do, Boyan. <laughs> it was not what I do. When I got home and then that night I looked at the clock, I'm like, okay, I just ate and I finished my dinner at 6.30. And then it hit me, gosh, if I eat something again, then I can't eat breakfast till about 11 o'clock tomorrow. So it kept me from eating. And I realized I had been lying to myself and I lied to Boyan. I was telling him that that was, some, I was convinced that I did that. 
And I think there's many things that we do. We think we do, but we don't. And I want God to show me truth. Now, that was just kind of a silly example. How are some ways, I, I was thinking about this as I was walking today. How are ways that we lie to ourselves? Maybe we lie to ourselves and say, I'm not worthy. Maybe we lie to ourselves and say, God has forgotten about me. He doesn't care. God is punishing me. God put the sickness on me to teach me a lesson. Well, that doesn't line up with God. Anything that doesn't line up with God that we are telling ourselves is a lie. And it's important to know God's word. It's important to know his voice. Be, and it's important to know even the voices that we're hearing in here. And don't say you don't hear them. We have self-talk that is going on all throughout the day. And a lot of times it's lies. Because it's been developed through wrong thinking. So I think it now would be a good time really to turn this video off and think about what are some of the lies we might be telling ourselves. I'm fat. I'm ugly. I'm no good. I'm not smart enough. Um, they hate me. They're talking about me. Um, I've got to fight for my own rights. I can't let God handle this. I've got to take care of it. I'm in control. These are things that are really lies. And so we need to evaluate that. Okay, he says, give me the privilege of knowing your instructions. It is a privilege to know God and to know his instructions. Now he gets to, these are declarations and determinations. And I'm going to close with these. At what we do in life is our choice. I believe we, we have choices. What time I get up, what I'm going to eat today, who I'm going to give my time to, who I'm going to speak to, who I'm going to help. These are choices that I get to make. And I can't control my day, but I can control the choices that I'm making. And here's what the psalmist says. I have chosen, verse 30, to be faithful. I've, been, I've chosen to be faithful, God, to you, to your, your people, to your word. I have determined to live by your regulations. I've determined to live a pure life. He's saying I'm going to be obedient to you. I'm going to cling to your laws when everything's trying to pull me away from truth. Then he says, Lord, don't let me be put to shame. Again, he's going back to all this is happening out here, God, and I'm trying. Don't let me be put to shame. And then he goes right back. I will pursue your commands no matter what. Even if people are coming after me, I'm going to pursue you, God, not revenge. For you expand my understanding. So here, he, throughout the scripture already in Psalm 119, he's been saying, give me eyes to see, give me ears to hear, give me a heart to understand. And now he's going, and expand it. Make it bigger. So we're going to close with that today. I look forward to, to sharing the next stanza with you that will pick up in verse 33. But there's we've talked about so much in each one of these videos. I've kind of committed to covering a whole stanza, and I'm trying to do it in 10 to 15 minutes. It's hard because there's so much in here. We could really take one verse, I lie in the dust, revive me by your word, and we could have talked about that probably for an hour. I just want to close in prayer for you. I, want, I do want to do this each time because I believe prayer is powerful. And I know right now maybe you're laying face down in the dirt. And I want to ask God right now to revive you by his word and encourage your heart. Father, I ask for a reviving, a refreshing, a restoring of our spirits. I ask that you come into us, Lord, and you revive us with your word. You restore us with your word, the written word and the spoken word. Speak to us today, Lord. Help us to understand your great love for us. Because if we understand your love for us and how good you really are and how faithful and how many wonderful deeds you have performed on our behalf, Lord, like dying on the cross for us. God, I just pray that you open our eyes to see that wonderful truth, wonderful deeds, and that we will live our life for you. Restore, my friend, today. Revive them. Encourage their hearts. Empower their souls. And equip their minds. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, I look forward to seeing you next time. Please pass these on. And please tell people to join us. They're on our YouTube channel, the Victorious Living YouTube channel, so you can go and rewatch these and share them and help your friends and yourself. And I'm, I watch them. 
I'll watch them over and over because I want victory too. All right, God bless you. Bye.